Welcome back everyone. This is the 5 p.m. update on, on now tropical storm Imelda. Now if you've been following along and you watched the earlier broadcast at 11 a.m. it was still a tropical depression, tropical depression number nine. Over the last six hours it has strengthened enough to become a tropical storm uh, acquiring the, the name Imelda. If we look at sort of the statistics, um, current peak wind speeds 40 miles per hour, pressure is down to 998 and movement off to the north at nine miles per hour. So let's take a look at where the system uh, is going to go over the next couple of days. Uh, so we see, get the box out of the way there. You can see, uh, and if you've been following, this trend has sort of evolved a little bit over the last couple of days, uh, generally moving off to the north uh, the rest of the day today, and then on Monday, uh, almost due north over the, the Bahamas, and then getting out here over the Atlantic and either on late on, um, Monday or early Tuesday, sort of making a hard east-northeast turn away from the east coast of the United States. Now this turn is a little bit harder and there's much higher confidence that has uh, developed over the last 24 hours. So this is good news. This is a good trend in terms of impacts for the east coast of the United States. But here's the kicker. While the impacts are coming down, they're not zero. There will still be some impacts for the East Coast of the United States, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But before I do, uh, one of the things we have to watch for is, this, so if you look at the cone here, sort of due north over the next couple of days, and then turning east, potentially, potentially moving very close to Bermuda here in the, in the next uh, couple of days, uh, late on Thursday uh, as a hurricane. So that's something we're gonna have to uh, you know, unpack a little bit more in the next couple of days. Now, for those of you watching in the Southeast United States, um, one of the things I want to talk about is, and this is the current uh, tropical storm warning over the Bahamas, this blue area here, but if you remember in the earlier updates, we had a tropical storm watch for the east coast of, the United, uh, east coast of Florida, I'm sorry, uh, that has since been discontinued, sort of denoting that trend I told you about just a second ago where the impacts are coming down. But wind, as we've talked about so many times, wind is not the only hazard in a hurricane. So let's look at the rainfall. So this graphic is an excessive rainfall outlook. So what it's basically telling you is a chance of you know, heavy rain developing over the next couple of days. So anywhere in the green area here, there's a slight chance of a, you know, heavy rainfall. But then I want you to look sort of at this yellow area here, uh, sort of in the low country of South Carolina, extending into extreme southeastern uh, North Carolina. This is where uh, two to four inches of rainfall uh, could occur. Uh, not historic by any, uh, any metric whatsoever, but it is something we're going to have to watch. The, you know, the rain could cause some, some isolated flooding issues. Now, what is a big impact for the east coast of the United States, especially the southeast coast of the United States, and you saw this during Aaron, even with an offshore track, is the rip current risk. So everything on here in red is a high rip current risk. So basically extending from extreme uh, southeast of Florida, uh, up the east coast of Florida, all of coastal Georgia, and much of coastal South Carolina, and then again on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. For the next couple of days, the rip current risk is going to be high, so make sure you're being safe if you're going to the beach over the next couple of days. Always swim near a lifeguard and check local beach conditions. That is it for us, but you can always get all of this information and more, including more timely updates from hurricanes.gov.